Hey guys, today I wanted to show you how to get started with our new Streambox servers. For the last few years we mainly offered virtual servers and seed boxes. Now we are introducing the Streambox. You can think of it as a tool to create your own personalized Netflix. In this demo I will use torrents to add content to my box, but you can also use newsgroups or direct downloads. When you first get your box, we advise you to use our wizard to install some basic apps and configure Plex. Plex is a stream server that lies at the heart of the stream box. To configure Plex, we only need your current IP from your ISP. Um, we do a good guesstimation for what that is, but you probably want to validate your IP via your modem or an external website. The IP is only a temporary measure. Later in the video, we'll tie our Plex server to our Plex account so that we can always log in regardless of our current IP. When you are ready, press the Bootstrap My Box button and continue on with the wizard. If you don't have a Plex account yet, this would be a good time to sign up for an account. Don't worry, it's free. This page has some instructions on how to tie your Plex server to your Plex account so you don't require the IP anymore, but we'll go through that later in the video. It seems our app installations are finishing, so let's set up the Lutch and add a torrent. I'm using the Thin Client here, but you can also opt in to use the web interface instead. Please note that you always use the daemon port when connecting using the Thin Client. Now I'm a big fan of Friends. I own all the seasons on DVD, so let's try and get that working via Plex. Now even though 90 MB per second is a good average download speed, let me speed it up some more so we won't have to sit here for an whole minute. Next I'll show you how to tie your Plex server to your Plex account. Now once our download finished, a process kicked off behind the scenes that analyzed all the files in our download. If the files were compressed, this process will extract them, it will find suitable subtitles, and it will also organize and rename the files so Plex can easily find out what you downloaded. It seemed it worked and Plex recognized our content. Let's try to stream it. It's working! Great! Now one of the things that makes Plex awesome is that it will transcode videos on the fly. This means Plex can sacrifice picture quality for a smoother playback. I'm using the Plex web interface right now, but they also have apps for Android, iOS, as well as Xbox, Samsung TV, Chromecast and loads of others. Now in case you don't feel like streaming, I will show you how to easily connect to your box over FTP. Just press the config tab. Here you'll find some generators that will give you pre-configured configurations for some of the apps that come with your box, such as OpenVPN. Press generate config and import this file into FileZilla. Easy as that. Seems everything is working here, so let's move on to one final thing. There's one last app that we recommend you install by default, and that's Pydio. It's a web-based file explorer that comes with a few nifty extras. You can use it to rename, move, download or remove your files, but you can also use it to share files. Now my wife also loves friends, but she isn't really handy with computers. So what I can do using Pydio is create a share for a file with a password that can only be downloaded once. I can send her that link so she can easily enjoy an episode on her own laptop. It even has an option to just create a QR code and send that.
this also seems to be working fine. Awesome! You can see that if you try to download it again, it won't work. These were only three of the ten applications that are currently available, and we're constantly adding more. You can stick around to see how I install Sigbeard, but this is it for the main attraction. I hope you come try out our new stream box.